When you're tooling leather, regardless of what style of carving you're after, beveling is going to be a crucial step. I'm Joe Meeling, and in this video, I'm going to show you a few tricks to get smooth, even bevel lines using nothing more than this bevel from your basic tooling set. Let's head over to the marble and get started. There's a couple things that are going to help you before you even pick your bevel up. Number one, having the right moisture content in your leather. You know, so if you missed the video on casing leather, be sure to go back and check that out. The other is when you make your swivel knife cuts, make sure you have good, deep, smooth swivel knife cuts. And those are going to help you run nice, smooth bevel lines. So we'll start with a couple straight lines here. Then we'll also maybe do... We'll just go right down below here with a couple of curved lines. We'll set up for some tighter curves here as well. All right, now when you bevel, we're going to want to make sure you're holding the tool right so with my thumb on one side and these three fingers on the other side of that tool my pinky is just going to be laid back here out of the way almost bracing against the leather but I'm squeezing this tool together not super hard but enough that it's not going to fly out of my hand when I hit it but I want to be make sure I'm holding that straight up and down I'm not tipping way back to me or way far away and I also want to, don't want to be really tipping side to side. We're going to take this tool, strike down, and you can see as I move over, I'm holding that tool just above the leather. I'm not wanting to be pushing it down in there all the way down to where it hit down because I can't move that to the side, right? So we want to hold it just above the leather. And as you hit, it's going down and picking back up. All right, notice when I'm moving along here too, I'm just barely moving over. I'm not moving a full tool length. Okay, when we get up here, I'll show you if we try to move a full tool width over there. See how that can create those lines in the middle? So we don't want to be creating those lines. As I move across here, I'm just moving over a little bit not even half of a tool width just barely slipping that over okay, and other things that I want to watch for we talked about tipping that tool too far so if I'm tipped off to the side here that's another way to create that chatter marks so we want to make sure we're having that tool straight up and down the next thing is even pressure when we strike that tool we want to kind of get in a rhythm see once I get in this rhythm down here it's easy to strike that tool with the same force each time if you're going along and Occasionally hitting one harder that can create some of those chatter marks as well Getting that rhythm and just move along nice and easy now you might say that's great But my bevel lines kind of look like that up there Well, the nice thing about beveling is you can always go back over your bevels when I go back over to if I need to even something up I hit it just a little bit lighter but I still move along a small amount at a time so we can go up here where it's already has those those big deep chatter marks and we can clean that up
So that smooths that out a little bit. Now I don't want to go back and just try to hit where the chatter marks are because what that can do is start causing more chatter marks because of hitting it at a different uh, a different pressure if you will when I hit that so that's why we just want to smooth out right across our lines you'll kind of catch that rhythm as you go across there and we can go over a few times if we need to but where we had those big deep chatter marks there and look how smooth we can get that okay but going past a straight line there's some curves to deal with right when we deal with curves it's going to be the same way holding that tool just above the leather letting it come back up after you strike down with your mallet we'll just barely walk that along moving it almost oh maybe a quarter of the width of that tool each time okay that works on an outside curve and that's also going to work on a, on an inside curve like this the other thing you'll notice too is i'm always keeping this flat side of the bevel to me so if i was wanting to bevel on the, this back side of the line i would want to actually turn my piece around that way you can always see your tool down in the line makes it a little easier to track less apt to run up over a line as opposed to if you were going this way see you'd be kind of blinded to where that tool's facing in the line so we want to turn that and keep that towards you all right here's where you may see some problems at when you get tighter curves now again this bevel is just the straight beginners uh, out of your beginners kit and there's only one size bevel in there well on a tighter curve when we try going around the outside sometimes your bevel can be a little too big for that curve and so it's we get something to point with here see how the end of that is coming out away from your line and that's going to create a little chatter mark of its own even as you work around there kind of see those smaller marks around there i'm going to flip this around and show you on the inside as well <clears throat> if i'm wanting to hit this around on the inside you can already see what's going to happen because my the end of my that tool is going to be touching on each side but not right in the middle because that's a concave line on the inside here i can see that's not super smooth with that chattering around there but if you're gonna just trying to get by with this one bevel and you're not ready to upgrade and and add to your tool block yet we can get a little bit more variety out of this tool by tipping it a little bit now up here we talked about not tipping that tool keeping it flat because we're moving along that line ideally that's how you want to run a bevel but if you're trying to make do with this size of bevel and you need to get in a little tighter space we can improvise a little bit by actually shortening the length of that face when i tip that tool now there's less of that tool that's touching the leather and going on that line now we have to be cautious of it so we don't create any extra chatter marks because of it being tipped but i can slowly walk this around here and it's not marring the leather up with that leading edge 
because I have that picked up out of the leather so I'm not marring that leather up on the outside just beveling against that line like I'm wanting to do. Now the same thing's going to work to get on the inside of that curve. Turn that around. Again, we're going to tip this up. Being real careful here. Allows us to get that line smoothed up a little bit and not have it chattered against like we have right there. So this isn't ideal having to tip that tool like that, but it's a way to get a little bit more versatility out of that same tool. To recap real quick, make sure to hold that tool just above your leather. As you move your tool across, only move a fraction of your tool width every time you strike with the mallet. When you do strike with your mallet, get in a rhythm. It's gonna help you hit with even pressure along there. Last, try not to tip that tool unless you're doing that to get a little more versatility and reach in a little tight space. Otherwise, keep that tool straight up and down as possible to help cut down on your chatter marks. I hope these tips are something that help you on your next tooling project. Remember as you're learning, take time, be patient with yourself and have a little bit of grace, but most importantly, have fun with your projects. I appreciate you taking your time with me here today and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.